Hello, friends. I want to welcome you to worship at Church of the Good Shepherd in Oswego, Illinois. So glad you're able to be with us on this day that we uh, listen for God's word and offer up our prayers and hear God's responses, including God's word. I'd like to share a few announcements about some of the activities of our church and uh, ministry opportunities that you might consider being involved in. Uh, in the gathering room, we have a couple of bins for donated items that we are looking for. One is for the Kendall County uh, Food Pantry, and so you can bring in uh, food items, non-perishable items, to the church and put them in the bin there. There's another bin for uh, essential needs for the asylum seekers from Central America, recent refugees that have landed in northern Illinois. There's a concerted effort by our local United Methodist churches to gather up some of these things and help make their uh, transition a little bit easier uh, as they have arrived in our area now. Uh, those include things like uh, small size clothing, especially socks, underwear, uh, first aid kits, medications for children and adults like ibuprofen, uh, personal hygiene items duffel bags, small suitcases, those sorts of things. Uh, so if you have any of those that you could help with, again, those are appreciated and can be brought to the church. Also want to talk about uh, trunk or treat coming up. We're going to have a cakewalk as part of that. So we're looking for people who can uh, uh, bake some cakes and cookies, brownies, Rice Krispie treats, really anything of that nature. Um, uh, the gathering room has uh, more information. You can bring it to the church Friday, October the 28th, um, yeah, or on Saturday the 29th. Uh, there's a new adult study that's going to be started on Sunday mornings at 9.30. It will be downstairs in the fellowship hall, led by Janet McCarty, and it's a four-week Bible study, seeing it how the seasons affected life for people in biblical times and uh, and the seasons in our own lives as well. Thanks to Janet for teaching and offering that class. Ooh, folks, let's take a breath and uh, relax ourselves, clear our minds, open up our hearts as we uh, heighten our awareness for God's presence. Let us hear this scripture verse from Ephesians in the New Testament. By grace, you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Friends, let us now worship as we listen to the prelude by Cheryl Todd.
called to worship, give thanks to God, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Let whoever is wise take heed of God's goodness. Let all consider God's steadfast love. Let us worship God. You are not hidden. There's never been a moment you were forgotten. You are not hopeless. Though you have been broken, your innocence stolen. I hear you whisper underneath your breath. I hear your SOS, your SOS. I will send out an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night. It's true. I will rescue you. There is no distance that cannot be covered over and over. You're not defenseless. I'll be a shelter. I'll be your armor. I hear you whisper under Let us come to the Lord in a time of prayer as we lift up various joys and concerns to the Lord. I'd like to start by lifting up one of our church staff members as she is having a work anniversary uh, uh, this day. Uh, for it was 16 years ago that Cheryl Todd began her ministry of music with us at Church of the Good Shepherd. and She's been blessing us ever since. Uh, uh, now being our, our uh, organist and accompanist um, uh, in other ways, as well as the director of our Joyful Noise handbells. And we celebrate uh, Cheryl's presence with us, uh, her gifts that she gives, and just Cheryl herself. And so as we ask for uh, uh, God's blessings for Cheryl, even as we give thanks to God for her presence. We ask, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We have some prayer blankets that we are gifting to a couple of people uh, in our congregation. One of them is Randy Wood, who recently had a knee replacement surgery. And so we have a, a blanket here that was created 
by some of the women of our church. We appreciate that so much. Uh, we also have a blanket for Judy Hoffenrichter, who uh, just this week had a knee replacement surgery. And so as they both recover from their surgeries and uh, continue with their therapy, uh, let us lift up Randy Wood and Judy Hoffenrichter as we ask, Lord, for your healing touch upon them. Uh, give them the strength and the endurance they need as well for the hard work of their therapy. Uh, surround them with family and friends who can encourage them on this journey uh, back toward wholeness and greater mobility. As we uh, lift up Judy and Randy, we ask, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we also have a prayer for Kathy Gonzalez, who's uh, undergoing a number of tests uh, just to try to rule out some, some things uh, medically in her life. We pray for, for Kathy's uh, well-being in, in, in the meantime and for God's wisdom to help those who are doing those tests and evaluating them. And as we lift up Kathy Gonzalez, we ask, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Then we want to lift up in prayer uh, Wheeler Saka, the 16-year-old son of Roland and Lucretia Saka. Uh, Wheeler was uh, just diagnosed with uh, lupus, and uh, we pray for uh, Wheeler and the family as they seek to learn uh, more about this very complicated disease and uh, how they move forward with that. And we do pray that God's healing ways will be upon Wheeler uh, to protect him and to give him the wholeness that he seeks. As we lift up our brother in Christ, Wheeler Saka, we ask, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Friends, we have a few birthdays to celebrate in our congregation this week, and I would like to say happy birthdays to uh, Jennifer Jalafo, to Pat Lundy, uh, happy birthday to Leanne Schilling, to Jason Kabelka, and to Ron Malik. And uh, we do uh, pray that they are blessed in a special way on that day, as well as this coming year of their lives. And as we give thanks to the Lord for all these brothers and sisters, we ask, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This is a day of new beginnings, time to repent. Your goodness goes before us, O Holy Redeemer, and the upright rejoice in your radiant splendor. Your touch turns deserts into pools of living water. As you embrace the land, it yields abounds. With wisdom you implant, we shall proclaim your virtue. 
Through our Savior, Jesus Christ, we shall sing your praise without ceasing. Amen. And now, friends, we invite you into a time of silent prayer that we may uh, approach the Lord with our deepest longings for ourselves as well as for others that we are aware of for a particular need for thanksgiving. And as we silently lift these to the Lord, may we be aware, um, not just during this time of worship, but in the days to come, of God's merciful response. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, we come to you with these needs for ourselves and for others. We come to you with grateful hearts for the blessings that you have given us, and we thank you as the source of those blessings, the very source of our lives. We thank you for your presence among us in the midst of our challenges and in the midst of our joys. Gracious Lord, we pray for our farmers and all in the agricultural industry as, as they harvest the crops this season. May you keep them safe uh, in a dangerous time, a dangerous occupation. And as... Uh, Many places in the world are at risk of uh, malnutrition from uh, the lack of, of harvest being shipped to their areas. Lord, we pray for a generous harvest and a just distribution uh, that all your children in our country and, and around the world may receive what they need for their daily bread. Lord, as we continue to worship today, we ask that you open up our, our ears and our hearts that we may understand your word to each of us for our lives today. Lord, we pray all these things as your sons and your daughters and as disciples of Jesus, for it is in his name that we come to you and pray as one people, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now friends, let us uh, give our attention to our one accord choir.
scripture reading today is from Exodus chapter 33, verses 12 through 23. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now if I have found favor in your sight, please show me your ways, so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. He said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go, do not bring us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing that you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Please show me your glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and will proclaim before you the name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, See, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock, and while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Our Gospel reading today is from Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and to not lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my accuser. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, Yet, because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice, so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says, and will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I would like to thank our liturgist today, Shar Momich. Thank you so much, Shar, for the scripture readings, the other prayers, and the litanies as well. Friends, I have a sermon I'd like to share with you today that uh, I entitled a Promised Presence. Now, as people of faith, one of our deepest longings is to know God, and to see God, is it not? In our community worship experience, uh, we symbolize God's presence in several ways. Uh, one of the most obvious, but often overlooked, is the flame that you see uh, over each candle that we always uh, begin worship with. Uh, that flame makes visible in a way that reminds us of our living God, uh, God's living presence. Now, of course, then on communion Sundays, the first Sundays of the month, we have the presence of the bread and the fruit of the vine that uh, remind us of the presence of the Christ who gave his life for us, that we may have life eternally. And whenever we celebrate a baptism, of course, the waters of that sacrament reminds us of the many ways that God's power and love have been present to God's people, not just in our own generation, but throughout the history of faith, through all the ancestors that we have spiritually as well. So in addition to the water and the fire, the bread and the fruit of the vine, a crucial sign of God's presence is also the gathering of God's people themselves, the body of Christ. Yes, that's us. It's one of the most important signs of God's presence. 
We are the body who affirms God's saving grace in the baptized one. And uh, we are the ones who promise to surround him or her who have been baptized with a community of love and forgiveness. That's why we always have baptisms in this public form of worship. Uh, this gathering of God's people, whether it is for a sacrament or not, it's a sign of God's presence as surely as the manna or the pillar of the cloud were symbols to the ancient Israelites. Even outside of these traditional symbols, though, we, we all have opportunities to experience God's presence in all sorts of ways, uh, often unexpected ways. Um, many times that experience comes through the common but valued uh, receiving of a smile, right? When someone smiles at you and you just feel warmer, it brightens you up, you can't help but smile back. When we receive a hug or a card of congratulations or encouragement, uh, when we get a visit from somebody that we are glad to see, um, maybe when we get some unexpected glimpse of God's beauty in nature. Those are all ways that God's presence makes itself known to us. Now, whether we've ever acknowledged or not these things, uh, we all have a deep longing, as I started out by saying, to know God, be God. But God knows we cannot handle the entirety of God's being. That's just too much for us. You know, even seeing the angels, we know is almost too much for the people of the biblical times. We know that from the scriptural record. Did you ever notice that after an angelic human encounter, the first thing that the angel often says to the human is, be not afraid. Now, why would an angel have to say that? Unless something there's something awfully overwhelming about the angel's presence. Be not afraid. So with all this in mind, perhaps we can understand our story from Exodus uh, a little bit better. Why God only let Moses see his backside. Now, that's all Moses could handle. The sight of God walking away. So while Moses stood on the rock floor at the cave entrance, God put a hand up to Moses' face and then only removed it as God walked on by. That's all Moses could handle, but it's also all Moses really needed. Now, whether it's been in worship or during some uh, major life event or sometimes during a quiet, unexpected moment, many of us would acknowledge that, that indeed God has been present with us. Sometimes we only realize that after we see this pattern of, of God's presence, you know, an accumulation of, of footprints or other signs. Uh, we know God. We do know God in some capacity. Uh, we've experienced the divine in some personal way, or we probably wouldn't still be worshiping in this public manner. So the question now is, can I be assured that God will be with me for the next challenging part? of my journey. You know, yeah, it's been great that God's been with me so far, but will God continue to be with me in my unknown future? For the Israelites, that was their question as they journeyed with their families uh, to the unknown promised land. They had never been there before. They just heard about it. It was a promise, right? The promised land. We know God was with us yesterday, delivering us out of Egypt, feeding us in the desert with food and drink. But what about tomorrow? It was essentially what the early Israelites were saying. 
And it's a question we've all asked in one form or another. Uh, we needed and, and appreciated God's presence to guide us through the tough task of raising our small children, right? But what about when they become teenagers or when they move out of the house or when they move back again into the house? Will God be with us for those times uh, in the future? Now, others may be asking, will I know God's comforting and healing presence for that surgery that I will need someday? Uh, will God guide me in my life after a loved one has died? Can I count on God? to journey with me if I lose my job someday? Can I kind of got a journey with me in my retirement years? Can my health and my income then be sustained while living out God's call, even at that stage of life? How will I know that God is with me? But the Israelites had a dramatic sign of God's presence, and that was the, the pillar of cloud. Uh, it was the water that came from the rock. It was the manna and the quail that came down for the wandering people of faith. Uh, but signs of God's presence do not always have to be so iconic and dramatic. Uh, God loves to make simple appearances in unexpected times and places. Now, for many centuries, we know in the Middle East, uh, there have been long-standing feuds between various uh, groups, including the Muslim factions, as well as uh, ongoing tensions with their Jewish and Christian neighbors. So when descendants or immigrants of those various religious and ethnic groups come to our country to become Americans, uh, they they find their lives now intertwined with their neighbors in, in new ways that are sometimes uncomfortable for them, but, but in ways that open the door for God's surprising presence to step in and bless. There was a former Jewish school in Skokie, Illinois, that uh, closed its doors a number of years ago because of low enrollment. The school was then purchased by a Muslim group uh, reflecting the changing demographic of the Skokie area. And then the school was reopened as a Muslim school. Now, there was not only sadness among some of the former Jewish constituents, but also some social anxiety among them about Muslims who were often seen as the enemy or taught to them as uh, to, to look at them as the enemy, uh, taking over their former sacred space. How do I think about this, right? How do I approach this? Well, not content to live with such a divide, a group of Jewish alumni from the old school that closed came to the now Muslim school with gifts, gifts of fruit and flowers, nuts, pencils, uh, paper, rulers, and, and this note that came with the gift. It said, we wish for you and your children uh, many years of love, learning, and laughter in the home that is now yours. Well, the new Muslim principals and teachers and students welcomed these Jewish well-wishers. Uh, they welcomed them with smiles. They welcomed them with a tour. They invited them to come and see uh, what had changed in their old building. They welcomed them even with a song in Arabic, which translates to uh, greetings of peace and peace be upon you. Uh, the visit coincided with the beginning of the Jewish New Year, which calls upon people to do something to help to repair the world around them. In that exchange, both Muslim and Jew 
I got a strong glimpse of God's unexpected and delighted presence in that old schoolhouse. Amen. Uh, what signs of God's presence, friends, have you experienced? Think about that. Have you found yourself being used by the Lord to repair your world in some way? To repair our world? Have you received an encouraging or a comforting message from a friend that came right when you needed it? Have you received an unexpected gift that allowed you to reallocate some of your other resources so that you could uh, pay some important bills? Have you heard a song whose tune or lyrics just spoke to your life in a way that, that helped to guide you or inspire you? Have you received an undeniable answer to prayer? Have you pondered a message from the scripture or a devotional reading that helped you to make peace or find peace with a difficult decision that you've had to make? Have you felt God using your life to bring mercy and justice to somebody in need? You know, Moses wanted to experience the fullness of God's glory, but he learned to be satisfied with just a passing glimpse. What glimpses of God's glory have you been blessed with? How have you witnessed those glimpses of God's glory? Have you glimpsed God's glory through the, uh, the startling beauty of God's creation? Uh, 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 through a boldly colorful rainbow after a storm, through the flash of a red cardinal in a pine tree, uh, maybe with the glowing orange from a setting sun reflecting off of the autumn leaves. I love that this time of the year. What glimpses of God's glory have you been blessed to witness? Well, author Carolyn Brown reflects on our scriptural story by saying that Moses was willing to risk an argument with God in order to talk God into being present with him and his people as they went to the promised land. And he got what he wanted, but was reminded that God's presence is demanding as well as supportive. And therefore, Dangerous to people who are not willing to respond. So be careful what you ask for, people, and be ready to respond. For baptized adult Christians, uh, we have committed ourselves to respond to God's supporting presence and God's demanding presence. God does want us to comfort and strengthen. Uh, Others, God wants to comfort and strengthen us on our journey. But God also calls us not to just sit and be blessed, but to get going. Get going to the ministry that God calls each one of us to engage in. Is God calling you, for example, uh, to minister to children or youth as a teacher or as a mentor in their lives. If so, then get going. Is God calling you to visit the sick, to visit the lonely, or the homebound? Well, then get going. Is God calling you to minister to the poor, to the hungry, to the refugee, to the oppressed? Get going. Is God calling you to share the good news, to Invite somebody to come to church with you. You know what I'm going to say. Get going. Is God calling you to share your gifts, your experiences, your passion with a particular ministry within the church or even beyond the structure of our church? If so, yeah, get going. Uh, and as you get going, brothers and sisters, uh, remember that God's promise is to be with you 
in that movement. You may not fully comprehend all the ways that God is present with you. Uh, even Moses, remember, was prevented from seeing all of God's glory. And that was for his own good, because it would be too much to handle otherwise. But, but know that your glimpse of God's glory will be sufficient. It will be sufficient for you to be comforted, for you to be encouraged, and for you to answer his call. So get going. Get going, my friends. All praise be to God. Let's pray. Oh, gracious Lord, we are so grateful for any glimpse of your presence that you bless us with. And may that glimpse give us the strength. May it give us the inspiration. May it give us the forgiveness and the mercy that we seek. But may it also strengthen us to get going, just like Moses did to get going, to answer your call with the ministry that you would urge us to do and that you equip us for. So, Lord, in thanksgiving for your presence and for your call, we give you our tithes and our offerings uh, that we bring to the church or send uh, through the mail or with e-giving. We, we ask, Lord, that you would receive these sacrificial offerings and bless these gifts that the church may be strengthened. Bless we as the givers as well. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, who is our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Well, friends, let us hear a song in prayer as beautifully shared by our soloist and choir, choir director, Jonathan Tater, as we hear the Lord's Prayer. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, friends, for being part of our worship this day. Uh, we appreciate it so much, uh, knowing that you're able to continue to worship in this online fashion. Uh, thanks to Shar Momich for her help today, for all of our musicians and singers as well. And as we get going, following the ministry God calls us to, may we catch a glimpse of God's presence and a full receiving of the peace of Christ this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>